a Dishotel, a regular financial accounting teacher. As you heard from my principal, the reason for this interactive uh, class. So right now, we want to have a kind of revision class from time to time due to the reason why, because there is no what time for this examination why for this uh, year. And I pray, as you follow me, Almighty Father, we grant you the wisdom to understand and comprehend the, the revision of today's class in Jesus' name. Today we are trying to look at a revision on financial accounting. Financial accounting. And the topic we want to talk to revise upon is the final account of a sole trader. When we talk about the final accounts of a sole trader, we are looking at the account that is prepared at the end of an accounting period by a business organization. And when we look at one-man business, we say that the motive of establishing a business is, what, is to make profit. Then for them to determine the profit at the end of the day, they need to prepare the necessary accounts. And when we talk about the necessary account, which is the final account of the sole trader, we are looking at the first one, the trading account. Two, the profit and loss account. Three, the balance sheet. So when we look at them one after the other, you should know that the trading account is the account that is constructed or prepared in order to determine your gross profit or loss. Why you prepare the profit and loss account to determine the net profit or loss. And at the same time, these two accounts follow the principle of double entry. So we refer to them, both of them as what? Revenue accounts. But when we look at the balance sheet, the balance sheet is not, is not an account. It is a statement showing the financial position of a business within a given period of time, usually one year. And when you look at the structure of the balance sheet, we have it in form of the assets on one side and the liabilities and capital on the other side, telling us that the assets of the business must be equal to what? The capital plus the liabilities. So, in moving on, looking at final accounts, we have two sections under it. The first one, we have final account, final account with weight adjustments. And the second one, we have final account without, without adjustments. But in most cases, why doesn't look at what? Does, do not look at final account without adjustments. Because they want to test your what, your IQ. Whether what and what you have, your teacher has taught you, you really understood uh, it. But let's look at final account with uh, adjustment. When we talk about adjustments, we are referring to what we call end of the year, end of the year adjustments. And these are adjustments that are necessary at the end of an accounting period. So when we look at these adjustments, it shows that there are certain things that need us to be what? Adjusted for us to have a true picture of the business organization. Now, when we look at adjustments, final account with adjustments, T, 
things to be adjusted are we have our closing stop. Our closing stop for the business has to be what? Adjusted. For us to know the remaining stop we have at hand at the end of that period, of that financial period. Also, the assets that we are using in the business, there must there, can, there is going to be a kind of what residual value. So we have to write off some amount on there. That is what call for what? What we call depreciation. Then likewise, we have drawings. We say the other time under the business entity concept that the business entity concept states that the business is what? Is different from the owners. They are not the same. They are separate entities. So whatever the owner consumes cannot be taken as what? The drawings by the business. It has to be what? Personal drawing. And that has to also what? Be put into consideration. Then also, we have we have bad debts. These are those that what? We sold goods to and eventually they are unable to what? To pay us for one reason or the other. And some of them, we might recover some, why some cannot what? Recover. Those we recover, we refer to them as what? Bad debts. Then, we have provision for discount. Provision. Provision for discount. The provision for discount is in two ways. We have it in, on debtors and we have it on creditors. For debtors, that is in form of what? Your discount allowed. While on creditors, we have it in form of your discount received. Those that you have been bought from and you have got given an incentive to pay on time. Now, we have another one. We call it accruals. Accruals are money due, but not yet paid. It shows that the money is what? It's due at a particular period. We see that the money is what? It's deferred, not paid on time. Are we there? Then, accruals is divided into two. We have income and we have uh, expenses. We have accrued income. That is the income that is due to you, but not yet received. And that is treated as an asset in the balance sheet. While expenses are accrued, is treated as a liability. That means you ought to us to pay a certain amount to some to an outsider. And you pay part, the remaining is what? Is still what? Old. And then, when you get to your liability, you know that that money does not belong to you. It's going uh, out. And another word for accruals, you see that we call it uh, points. Points outstanding. Outstanding. Deem. And so on and so forth. And finally, then, we have. The other one, which is our repayment. Repayment means money paid in advance. You ought to pay one naira and you decide to give the person five naira. It shows that the extra money on it is what? It's being paid uh, ahead. And repayments too will also come in form of income and also expenses. When income is prepared, it is treated as a liability. Because though the money, the income means for money that is coming to you. But at the same time, when it is not yet due and you receive excess of that money, at any point in time, the person can come back to you to ask for the excess they has paid. So that makes the money to become what? A liability on you, which must not be spent. While expenses, is treated as an asset in the balance sheet. I believe you are following me. So with all this analysis, 
there shouldn't be what? Any problem when you come in, in contact with what? Adjustments. And don't forget, again, when it comes to accruals, owings, outstanding prepayments, either income or expen uh, expenditure, it has to be what? Added. Why? Prepayments has to be deducted from any information relating to it, from any transaction. So quickly, where we are going exactly, let's look at a brief illustration that will show us how to go about treating it when we have such or a similar question being given to us by examination body. Illustration. Given the following, given the following below, I have sundry expenses, sundry expenses, six thousand one hundred debtors. Twenty-eight thousand fixed us. Five thousand seven hundred telephone. It's in a interest received. Interest received. 320 drawings. Thirteen thousand two forty. Then we have the following additional information. The first one. It says depreciation at cost fixed costs ten percent two two bad debt. Written up three hundred three hundred three provision for discount on debtors. 5% and create a bad debt provision of 2% for telephone oil. Twenty-nera, five, sundry expenses in advance. In advance, thirty-nera, interest going, forty-nera. Seven. The owner withdraw withdraw goods worth five hundred naira. You are 
require to you are required to carry out the necessary adjustment. You are required to carry out necessary adjustments. So when you take a good look at this illustration, you know the board is not enough to contain all your information. But we just have to work to pick those ones that will work, that will we need to carry out adjustment upon, that involve adjustments. And when you look at it from the additional information that you discover that. Our summary expenses needed to be adjusted according to additional information, information five. Our fixtures, according to additional information one. Our telephone, and on and on like that. Then let's see how we are to undo all this. Let's see them one by one. We pick illustration, the adjustment, and treat them one after the other. One after the other. The first one, it talks about depreciation. When you are dealing with depreciation, you have to look at your trial balance very well. When you are dealing with depreciation, you look at it very well. If there is a form of cost, then we are having a depreciation at the beginning before we have another depreciation. But due to this one we are looking at now, let's look, leave out the other one which will lead us to accumulated depreciation and focus on this. When you are to carry out depreciation on this, you write out the information that we are given. Fixed us amounted to, according to the child balance, you are given 5,700. Then the amounts to be taken to profit and uh, loss will now be the recession percentage 10% of 5,700. This cancel this, this cancel this. We are left with. 570 naira. And this figure is to be taken to the debit of your profit and loss account. So once you have done this, you have solved the problem. Then, the next thing now is to look at the additional information two. Two says we have to write off our bad debt. You note it down. Bad debt written off amounted to 300. We are not given any bad debt in the question. But we are given, but we are given debtors. But since we are asked to write this one off, any information in the, in the additional information must have two treatments. First in the profit and loss for the trading, the second in the balance sheet. But for this now, we just take it one straight away to our profit, profit and loss account and be debited. While we take it to balance sheet at the same time, this one is also going to balance sheet. Then we now go to additional information Three. Three says that provision for discount on debtors is to be made 5%. Then we should create a bad debt provision of 2%. So when you look at this, we, this is where we need our debtors. Our debtors amounted to 28,000. According to the question that we are looking at, 28,000. Then, 
before you go ahead to calculate any provision that you are asked to calculate, there's need for you to work to effect the bad debt written off inside the debtors. Because it is based on the remainder that you can be able to work to give discount. Because you have already out of the total money they are owing you. Because those that are owing you refer to them as debtors. Out of the money they are owing you, you have written off part of it as debt that cannot be recovered. So for that, we have to learn what? Bad debts of 300, giving us a total of 27,700. Then, it is now based on this. We will now calculate a provision, provision for discount on debtors. And the percentage that we are asked to use is what? 5%. We have 5% of the net debtor. This is our net debtor, which is 27,700. This comes with this, this comes with this. So here we have 5 times 7, 35. 5 times 7, 35 plus 3, 38. 5 times 2, 10. 10 plus 3, that is 13. We have 1,385. This is 35, 35, 38, 10, 13. And this will now be what? Debited to our profit and loss account. Then, when you look at that additional information 3, it is 3 in 1. It is 2 in 1, sorry. It says provision for discount on debtors. And at the same time, when you are through with that, create a bad debt provision of 5%. That means we are still writing off further amount on the remaining amount. There is going to be another remaining amount, which we believe that we cannot recover at all. And that is why we need to work to go ahead to determine our other net debtor. To determine that, we have a former net debtor, which is 27,700, less provision that is made. And our provision is 1,000, 1,385. When we subtract this, this is 5. This is 9, take away 8, 1. This is 6, take away 3, 3. This is 6, and this is 2. Then, from here, we will now determine uh, what? A further bad debt provision. So we now have provision for bad debt, which is 2% of our net debt to again, 26,315. And when we multiply this, 2 times 5 is 10, this is 2, breaking it uh, 3, this is 6, this is 12, this is 4 plus 1, 5. Then divide by 100. Zero comes to zero. Then this divide by this, we have 5,200 and okay, 526 naira 30 cover. Because we move our zero, zero backward twice. One, two. We have 526 naira 30 cover. So having me that, this will now also be what? Taking to our Profit and loss account to be debited. Then, the next one now is to move on to number four. Four say 20 naira, giving us a total of 100 naira. While the 100 naira will now be taken to our profit and loss account to be debited. Why this 20 naira? is going to our balance sheet to be treated as a liability. 
Then we have the fifth one, sundry expenses in advance. Sundry expenses account from the trial balance. We are given sundry expenses of six thousand one hundred. And like I said, anything advanced is money paid ahead. And that money paid ahead is not meant for that accounting period, but for the next accounting period. So for that, that has to be what? Subtracted. So with less advance. And the advance we are given here is just 13 naira. When we subtract this, this is zero, this is seven, this is zero, and this is what? Six. So here, yeah, this will now be taken to our profit and loss account, and this will be taken to our balance sheet as an asset. Then we are now left with six and seven. Six and seven. Six and seven. For number six. Now, this one is also saying interest owing. That is interest. Whether it is coming in or it is going out, we know that interest is what? Oh, interest is being owed, is coming in when it is your own personal account and the bank or somebody that lends money from you is paying you what? Interest. And the person is still owing you an amount of what? Interest. But if it is going out, that shows that you are owing money to what? To outsiders. So the money is going out. Uh, but all the same, whether income or expenses. So far, money is what? It's being what? Owed. It has to be what? Added. Then we have to open interest. We see. You see, this one is saying interest received. That means it's coming uh, in. So we open that. From the trial balance, we have interest of 320. Then we add OIN. OIN of OIN of 40 naira. All together, we have 360 naira. And this will now be taken to our prof our the creditor because it is income. Credit, profit and loss account. Why this will be taken as an asset in the balance sheet. Then in the balance sheet. Then finally number seven. To solve the entire problem. The owner withdraw goods worth 500 naira. We are told that out of the, the transaction of the business, the owner feels that he needed some things. So he had to what? To take from the business. And that business. Is, we said the other time is what is different from the owner. It's a different entity entirely. So for that, we should not take it as what the business consume, but the owners withdraw. So to do that, we have to effect that changes from the drawings. So we go to drawings account and we look at it. Our trial balance. From our trial balance, you are given drawings of 13,240. 13, then, then we had goods withdrawn. There's no way we can subtract it because the drawings will continue to increase. And the goods withdrawn is amounted to 500 naira. All together, we have 
13,740. Then don't forget, this has to be effected in our trading account. Trading. In our trading account. And to be deducted from purchases. Why this should be taken to our balance sheet? Because out of the goods, those goods that we acquire is meant for resale, for us to make profit. But the owner has taken part, part of it. And from there, they, that has caused what the shortage in what the, the business acquires to make more profit. So that has to be effected and deducted from our purchases. We deduct it from, uh, from our purchases. Then we now also deduct the total drawings from the capital of the business after adding our net profit. So when you are given adjustments, you have to look at it critically from the beginning to the end. And one thing I normally advise my students, especially those that have written while for past years, that for you to know that a question is complete, you have to start from your trial balance. But like I've said the other time, this one, there's no way for us to, prepare, to create a debit and credit trial balance. But whenever you are having access to your past question, the first thing you need to do is to take the debit of your trial balance, Take the credit of your trial balance, add the figures separately. If the debit of the trial balance is equal to the credit of the trial balance, then that shows that the question you are given is what? Perfect. And you are expected to present a complete uh, solution at the end of the day. And if peradventure, because you are still learning, you are unable to what? To balance it up. That doesn't mean that we should start what? Counseling. And that's why I said, when you are given anything pertaining to additional information, final accounts, you must, you must study those information very well, one after the other. Study it very well, look at it, the one that needed to be subtracted, the one that needed to be added, and is it expenses, is it income, before you can work, go ahead. But at the same time, I need to chip in this. All these ones I've tried to show you here is just a preamble. These days, why do examiners, markers don't follow any footnotes or notes to the account, outside the account? Whatever you have to do must be done in your profit and loss account. But I'm promising you, when next we are having class, interactive class again, then we will try to take a comprehensive question and be able to what? Have all these solutions inside our final account from the beginning to the end. Because that is where it's expected of you to show all your workings. And at this junction, if, yeah, I want you to give you an assignment and do it and get back to me. That is SSC, if you are having your past question with you, SSC 2015, question 9. That is the books of uh, Bonjuri. SSC 2005. First question. So, an assignment for you, for me to know truly you've gotten the message I passed across to you. SS C E May June May June 2015 Question 9 Question 9 Do it Do it and make sure you follow up the additional information very well treat it and give me a complete solution of the information. So by the time I look at it, then I'll be able to also get back to you and give you more and more on such so that we still have other topics to, to revise. Thank you.
Amen. God bless.